Sheriff Prater, here we are in the second week of June and in the city of Shreveport, 41 homicides. If this pace holds, we'll have 75 at the end of the year. Do you see this violent crime as maybe the biggest issue right now facing Shreveport and Kettle Parish? I think it is. I think it's the biggest issue, but you hear more about COVID than you do violent crime for some reason. Violent crime is, it's reported one night and then the next day everybody quits talking about it until the next weekend and then it's reported again and then it's down. And there's no, what we're doing is not working. So we need to do something differently. And this plan that I set forth, or I call it a plan, it's more suggestions. It's ways for the critical players, which is everyone in every organization and every elected official, it's some things for us to, you know, let's all look at ourselves and see are we doing everything we can do? Are there things we can do better? And, and that's what this is for our whole community. When you say some of the elected officials, I notice in the uh, numbered paragraphs here, you say the district attorney and you say the city council and the mayor, but are there individual people who are elected to office that need to be called out? For example, the district attorney, James Stewart. You mentioned that people need to be prosecuted fully for possession of guns, particularly felons. Does district attorney James Stewart need to do more to prosecute these folks? It's, it's not my place to tell people what they should and shouldn't do. We all have a critical position on the team. But if, if the quarterback isn't able to throw a pass because the line is getting, the defensive line is getting through, then the blockers need to do a better job. I'm suggesting some things in this that will help us. It's a well accepted, well, it's well accepted amongst law enforcement professionals that if we will take every case of illegal gun possession and treat it very seriously and hold the people accountable, then you will start, begin to address violent crime. I'm not saying that the district attorney's office does not take them seriously and does not hold the people accountable. I'm saying we need to look at that. Are, are they? Are they doing it? Are the police aggressively policing and writing good reports to where the district attorney can make good cases? Uh, there's, I, want, I think everybody has a dog in his hunt. And that's what I'm pointing out here. And once the cases are made, once the cases are prosecuted, then I know there's some weaknesses in the state law that the state legislators ought to be working on. And that's their responsibility. Justice reinvestment of 2017 let some, a number of violent offenders out early. These violent offenders, some of them have reoffended and hurt people again. Have we taken a critical look to see if that act, those 10 acts, helped or hurt? Where's the report on that? Where did the money go that was saved by letting this number of prisoners out? Was it spent correctly? All I'm saying is, let's look at violent crime in Louisiana like we looked at the pandemic. And where's the vaccine for violent crime? And that's what I'm saying. There, there's, we got to do, we got to do more as a community, more as elected officials. And I simply suggest that if the elected officials, uh, whether it be state legislators or whether it be city council or the commission or me or anybody else, I want somebody to ask hard questions. And if I'm not doing what I should be doing, don't don't vote for me. Are Listen. there people who have been elected right now that you feel aren't doing what they were elected to do? I, I don't want to get into the negatives um, and, but, and start saying that sort of thing. Um, but that seems to be a problem, Sheriff, here, because nobody will call out people who maybe are not addressing this issue. Well, I mean, you can look at, you can look at, all you got to do is read this and read between the lines without me drawing a line, and there's a difference. There is one anecdote that you brought up, or, or story maybe I would say, a point in one of these paragraphs, and you mentioned it just now, are police officers, I assume in the city department, writing complete reports that allows the prosecutor's office to prosecute these criminals. I've heard the stories, have you heard the stories where there may be a disconnect between the police department and Chief Ben Raymond and District Attorney James Stewart's office in prosecuting violent criminals? Well, we need to, we need to put on our big boy pants 
and get that straight if there is one. I'm not saying there isn't, and I'm not saying they're not wearing big boy pants. I'm just saying that that's the kind of, th we all need to look at this thing with fresh eyes. If something is not working, something needs to change. And we can all change, we can all do more, we can all do better, and we've got to do better or else Shreveport is going to continue the di downward spiral. We've got to do something. The city departments have to do something about the blight. The blight is horrible. You've been in the neighborhoods. You know what I'm talking about. It's worse than I've ever seen in all of my years of policing. Shreveport has gotten to that level. We've got to do something, and we've got to do it sooner rather than later. Why do you think that issue doesn't get as much discussion at city council and in the media? Because other cities have attacked that problem. Kansas City, St. Louis, Baltimore have tried that approach. Why haven't we? I don't know. I have, I have been singing that song for a year now and taking pictures and trying to get something aggressively done about it. And hopefully something will be done about it. I'm hoping that some things are underway that will, but they've got to be done. There's got to be, and people, there's got to be an accountability if it's not done. Uh, and, and so that's one of the big things. The Cattle Parish Commission has got to come up with a way to have some juvenile, uh, s some space for juvenile violent offenders. Right now there's not. We're having to hold some at, at what, what we call the big boys jail, the, the adult facility. And we're having to hold some juveniles over there, which we're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, you know, that's, that's, anyway, I won't get into all of the reasons we're not supposed to, but it just makes sense. Right, and, and I can tell anecdotally, my home was broken into two years ago, and police flat out told me that it was juveniles. They suspected, but there was little to anything they could do, even if they caught those offenders red-handed. I don't think people understand that issue here. Right. Sheriff, unless it's a violent crime that a juvenile commits, a lot of them are simply, it's catch and release. Mm -hmm. So many times it is catch and release. And people have the mistaken impression that our jail, that the, the, the adult facility, CCC, is full of just nothing but people that smoke marijuana and that that's all we're in law enforcement are out there doing, trying to pick up people that smoke marijuana. We write tickets for marijuana and have for five years. We don't arrest people for simple possession of marijuana. We just write them a citation. We, and we need to continue to work on violent offenders. We're not trying to see how many we can lock up or how long we can lock them up. But anybody that illegally possesses a firearm after they've been told they couldn't, they should be arrested, dealt with, and incarcerated because a person that's already a felon and you say, no, you can't have a gun, and they go out and get a gun, there's only one thing they're going to do with that thing that gun and that's going to be used it against someone else. So, so there are the laws you believe on the books to prosecute those criminals to the fullest extent of the law and maybe clean up some of this violence on our streets. Right, we need to have we need to have have it to where if you're a dope dealer and you had a gun, if you deal narcotics, any kind of domestic abuse and you possess a gun, a felon that has a gun, any of those people, we've got to get the mindset now that within the the Criminals have to get the mindset that, hey, I'm a felon, I can't have a gun, I'm not going to get a gun because I'm scared. They are in the federal system. Criminals are scared of possessing guns. They don't want to be tried in the federal system for possess illegal possession of firearms. Not so much in the district courts. And there's a reason for that. And we need to get it to where they are scared to possess a firearm. Does it sound like then our police aren't charging these felons in possession with that crime and or our prosecutor isn't prosecuting those crimes if they are charged? I'm asking if you look at number 11 on here, it asks the media to do more investigative reporting. You're not going to believe me necessarily uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm part of, I'm part of this, okay? I'm saying do some independent research. Uh, let the businesses be involved in that. Let them get connected with what's going on. The neighborhood associations, everybody ask questions. You should not vote on somebody if you don't know they're doing everything for your best interest. And that includes, that includes COVID, that includes violent crime, that includes everything. But there's no hard questions asked about violent crime. And there needs to be. You bring up a point that I haven't heard anyone say in a long time. We all are accountable here, but you do call out the business community too, asking them to do more to make sure our elected officials are accountable. Because the honest 
answer is, Sheriff, if our economy doesn't grow here, this city will shrivel up and die. That's and if right. there's a violent crime issue, new businesses aren't going to come, old businesses are going to leave. Do we put enough focus on the economic aspect of this violent crime? Right. It, it used to be that elected officials would get elected and, and then they would, they would work with the communities and, and the communities would steer them in the direction that they wanted to go. They led them in that way. Now it seems like we have, in not every case certainly, but in some elected officials get elected and then they decide the direction that they're going. Well, that's never been the way it's supposed to be. The elected officials, the simply the people pick out a point on the horizon and they elect somebody to take them there. Now we elect people and we say, where's the point on the horizon? Well, it's all, it's all boogered up and backwards. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The people are in charge. The people are sick of violent crime. The people want elected officials to do something about violent crime. Now the people and the businesses and the churches and the schools, they, everybody needs to ask what's being done about it. Sheriff, this is one of the most detailed plans I've seen in a long time for dealing with violent crime, particularly here in Shreveport and Cattle Parish. Why make this statement now? Because I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it not working. I'm tired of people say, I mean, let's face it, people look at law enforcement and they say, what are you going to do about violent crime? And then we try and try and try, and then some media, not you all, but some media paints the police as the criminals and the criminals as the victims. And then yet they're gonna hold the police responsible for doing something about violent crime. And so, it, it, like I say, the system is boogered up and something has to be done about it. And I hope this will open some eyes and, and let people know that something's gotta change. Uh, the police are out there, 99% of the police and deputies and all that, we're out there working hard. But why work hard if you don't appreciate us? And if the rest of the team is not going to work just as hard, our legislators given us good, solid sentencing laws that are going to hold people accountable, not worrying about how many people are in jail because it doesn't matter how many is in jail. If you've hurt somebody, you need to be in jail. And so I'm sick of that kind of attitude of it's everybody's finger pointing and doing something else. I'm not meaning to finger point in this. Okay, that's not, that's not the purpose at all. Uh, except for, to the point of, let's all look at ourselves. What do you say when you hear elected officials and heads of other law enforcement agencies say, well, violent crime and homicide is up all over the country. Of course, it's going to be up here in our own neighborhood, our own backyard. Well, same thing I'd say if they said, our drinking water is, is horrible here, so don't drink the water. You, well, I don't care what it's like in Chicago, we gotta do something about our drinking water. Same thing with COVID, same thing about violent crime. What do we wait for? We wait for Chicago to come up with an answer for violent crime? I can tell you some of the answers to violent crime and it's in this report. I know about here because I know what's going on here. I know we don't have juvenile, violent, uh, juvenile offender space. I know we have violent criminals being let out and given break after break. I know those things. Let's start there. There's four types of, of violence and shootings, okay? There's homicide, or there, there's suicide, there's domestic violence, there's mass murders, and then there, there's commonplace murders that I'm talking about here, the violence I'm talking about. We can't do much about these. We can try, and we are trying, and we should try, and all that, but it's this one right here we gotta work on. That's your thugs that got a gun, shouldn't have a gun, and they're gonna go out and hurt somebody. Sheriff, my last question. Sheriff, you're always someone who answers honestly and, and never ducks a question. In some aspect, this looks like a campaign platform for someone running for a higher office. Are you possibly considering a run for governor or the mayor even of Shreveport? No, sir. No, sir. I'm not considering that. And this isn't, this isn't it. This is just because this is not a pleasant thing to put out. Because when I ride the elevator with politicians and elected officials, when I have to ride right here in Government Plaza, when I ride the elevator with them, I know that they're not real fond of some of the things that may be in this report. Uh, but I'm to the point to where people make more, I'm, I'm more interested in people than I am elected officials. And we got some great elected officials, but we got some elected officials that, that 
need to get off there. They need to do more in our fight against violent crime. And I know police and law enforcement, we need to do more too. And we're doing more. But we need somebody to block and tackle for us. 